Hi, my name is Lena Crotty, and I have created an innovation known as the Reactive Tennis Ball, and I attend Peak to Peak High School located in Lafayette, Colorado. So the problem. So it has been extremely difficult to get together, especially um, in a COVID-19 world where we have this pandemic going on that is very contagious. So I am a tennis player and whenever I wanted to get out to play, I could no longer play with my friends. So I would always be using ball machines, which are heavy, extremely expensive. Um, they were always breaking and overall just something that was uh, expensive, but you weren't getting quite um, the return on your investment that you were desiring. Additionally, the reactive tennis ball would be less costly to the environment by not using so many different materials as well as um, different factories in foreign countries that already face a lot of pollution problems. So this is an intro to the team, which is just me. <laughs> so as I mentioned earlier, my name is Lena Crotty. I play tennis. Um, I am going into my first year of high school right now. I'm in my first year of high school. And I plan to play varsity number one singles. I practice every day for about two and a half hours. And um, I've really enjoyed it. I practice with different, different high schoolers um, from Fairview and Niowat, other Boulder Valley schools. Um, I am super motivated for school and tennis. So this is a problem that I want to solve because I do face having to carry tennis balls all the time. And it's not really a fun part of the sport. All right, so um, my innovation is primarily a reactive tennis ball that would be able to uh, come back to the player. So there's a classic drill of just hitting a ball with your racket against the wall and just getting your pace um, to be redirected and come back at you. However, to find a wall all the time becomes kind of uh, redundant as also just boring. So I've always wanted to create something that I could just go out in my in any area, you know, in my driveway and just hit a tennis ball and for it to be able to bounce and redirect its energy back to me without the um, noise and the um, process of finding a wall. So what makes this um, something that is a red ocean is the fact that it hasn't been done before. Additionally, we are taking out different factors while adding in others. For example, the productivity of the purchase is much better. As, as you can see, I marked it with what I think is um, makes it a red ocean product. And so the purchase, it's a one-time purchase, which, you know, although that does limit us in our market, I think you know, people will buy more and more of these for friends and other uses, especially if this could be um, shown to a tennis club audience because they purchase so many different tennis balls per year and it's extremely costly. Uh, additionally, the actual use is a lot more productive as well as the maintenance because the ball isn't going to go dead. Like with normal tennis balls, after about a couple months, the ball immediately deflates and you have to buy new ones, new ones. And the disposability of this is also much healthier because of the fact that it's just not being constantly thrown away like normal tennis balls. So the environmental friendliness, uh, as far as the purchase goes, is it is not being created in these um, huge factories over and over again. And while they may be created in factories, it is not a thing where it is going on it's just massive amounts of tennis balls are being created every day and contributing even more to greenhouse gases and carbon emissions once again the use is a lot more environmentally friendly because it is not a constant constant purchase and then once again maintenance it is not something that is going to be deflating and disposability it is not being thrown away as much as tennis balls all right, so some examples is we do live in a mass consumer world where people are constantly buying and buying and buying for the next new thing. And while this may be great for someone pitching a business, it is something that is extremely costly to our environment. And it's important to consider that when um, desiring to create a sustainable product. Additionally, it contributes to pollution, climate change. Finally, the last one I want to touch on is the country relationship. So it's just a known fact that the United States, a lot of the stuff that we produce um isn't you know isn't our own or a lot of things we we get a lot of exports so if we this is something that we could create u.s based it would be extremely beneficial to our economy as well as it wouldn't be a product that would be extremely affected by foreign relationships like a lot of the products we do have
All right, so why it is in the red ocean landscape is it is reusable, less costly to create. However, we could sell it at a higher price, giving us a better profit margin. Additionally, as I mentioned prior, it is a much, much better for the environment and our world together. And we have people, you know, who are aiming for a more sustainable buying lifestyle. And this is a product that would definitely go into that. Um, yes. Okay, here we go. So the target market. So the first tier would be tennis players. I think, you know, when you're warming up at a tournament and you have to, you know, carry all these balls in your bag that you have to bring on your own, half of them are dead and you have to go find a wall to warm up with or warm up with like some complete stranger you don't know. Um, it's definitely, this is something that would appeal to me as a tennis player. And I think to many of my friends who play tennis as well. So the second tier are coaches. This is going to be a bit more of a, um, interesting market because because coaches are definitely set in their ways often um, with everything from drills to even the tennis ball they use. You know, some really want to use Wilson while others want to use Penn tennis balls. So this would be something that could be difficult. But I think once we get on, it's coaches. Then we can get into um, other more bigger markets such as, you know, tennis clubs, country clubs in general, because those are people who are constantly buying tennis balls. All right, so the third tier are just new players and those who do not play tennis and maybe want to pick it up. And this could be kind of their first step is purchasing this product. So the four actions of what kind of makes the product different is the fact that the mass production and pollution of the product as well, yeah, this mass pollution is eliminated overall. So it would reduce pollution in turn, as well as it would create a lasting product product that does not need a constant repeat buy like normal tennis balls do. And we could also raise the price because it is a purchase that is going to be more high, um, highly regarded as far as the technological aspect. Uh, finally, we could raise the price because it's not something you're constantly, constantly buying or buying mass, like mass sums of like tennis balls. So yeah, that is um, my project, the reactive tennis ball. Thank you very much for listening and considering.